Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to another video. In this one, we are going to be taking a look at Red Dead Redemption Game of the Year Edition in order to fully test and see exactly how the Undead Nightmare DLC runs in RPCS3, the PlayStation 3 emulator. As you can see, we are using Vulcan, I'm using Anistotropic filtering set to automatic, though you can set this to 16x I believe. I am also using 720p resolution, scaled by 300% up to 4k resolution. Now, I already basically had a video done on this game looking at its performance and its compatibility, but they actually released the latest master update, which is basically the latest version that is available to download on the RPCS3 website, and it actually gives better performance practically for everyone in the game. So rather than releasing a video that showed how the game ran on an old build, I just scrapped that video and decided to remake it and see exactly how it runs right now. So as we can clearly see, we are getting 30 FPS in our loading screens, splash screens and menus, which is generally the norm considering this game is capped at 30 FPS on the PlayStation 3 console itself. So let's just head on in through these menus and as you can see in this rendered menu we are getting in and around 20-21 FPS. Okay so let's just load in game, I'm going to come to single player and actually load the Undead Nightmare DLC. This DLC actually was probably one of my favourite DLCs ever released by Rockstar, especially so when you consider that this DLC was pretty much years ahead of its time being released in 2010. It really did fill a niche that I don't think people even knew was there until this game was released. Well, this game and DLC was released anyway. So as you can kind of hear uh, in the background, the audio does work, but it is kind of choppy. He built his ranch. Yeah, so it's not exactly perfect, but it's not terrible either, and considering, well, 8 FPS, which isn't great, but considering the game does run between anywhere between 8 and 25-ish FPS, it's actually fairly good, and even in the previous build on the previous video I was making, the lowest FPS I saw was 3 and 4, whereas now it's kind of in and around 8 to 10 at its lowest, and we are hitting 30 FPS much more consistently, especially when running around in the actual open world and not just looking up at the sky or looking down at the ground. So these cutscenes are actually super unstable, so please do not use uh, the fact that I am getting a smooth cutscene playback as a basis for how this game runs and how its compatibility is in its current state of this emulator, because literally at any time during this cutscene, we could go we could get an SPU thread crash and the whole game just seize up and stop working. It won't crash my PC or anything, it'll just crash the emulator, or not even crash the emulator, just crash the actual instance of the game. So I'm guaranteed pretty much to crash in this next cutscene, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to skip this cutscene and get us on to the next bit of gameplay. So we are back in game, we are getting 15 to 17 FPS, so let's just put Uncle out of his misery for uh, for having bitten Abigail. Abigail? Is it Abigail or Abignail? I can't remember. I think it's Abigail. But yeah, wrecked. So yeah, you can see we are getting 20, 25, 26, 30 FPS nearly there. And as soon as we look at a slightly demanding area, so anywhere that there's physics objects or drawn rendered objects we are dropping down to around 15 60 fps which is fairly decent you can still hear that in these cutscenes when there is a lower fps we are getting strange audio yeah but the game looks well apart from the light sources being super bright the game actually looks fairly decently rendered to be honest and um if it wasn't for all of the crashing, I would almost say it's playable because, to be honest, I realistically don't mind playing a game like this at 10 FPS. Something that is a 30 FPS game, I really, really wouldn't mind playing it at 10 FPS, especially experimentally in an emulator and stuff like that. So yeah, time to get the lasso out and corral us up some zombies. So uh, let's let's just see how the game stays running. So 30 FPS, we've hit 30 FPS in gameplay, although technically I suppose it was looking at the ground. So we have a... Uh, a zombie Jack and I'm gonna call her Abigail so we'll say zombie Jack and Abigail so uh, let's corral us up some zombies so gameplay wise everything seems to work I know in some games on RPCS3 when you do interactions like shooting or interacting with other NPCs it can tend to crash the game but not in this one I found 
we do still have, as I said previously, we do still have fairly regular crashes. So the fact that it has run this smoothly for me, don't use that as a, I guess, a benchmark for how this game is actually running on this emulator. Um, it is actually apparently incredibly hard to, um, to compatibility check this game because the crashes are so, not frequent, but they're so random and so different. It's never the same crash. Uh, so apparently it's very hard to um, troubleshoot the actual crashing issues in this game. So as you can see, when we're inside and there's a lot of complex geometry drawn, we're down to 10 FPS. But to be honest, 10 FPS isn't terrible, especially when you consider, you know, emulator and this game is a 30 FPS game. Light sources are still broken. You, see, you can see these weird black streaky shadows that are that are coming off of everything, but um, <laughs> yeah, let's feed the zombies. Uh, I don't think that's the kind of meat they want. Um, yeah, but the game is not running too bad. So 14, 15 FPS with 10 FPS lows and 30 FPS highs. So generally, I wouldn't consider that to be bad or terrible at all. So um, yeah, let's uh, let's just continue along and and see exactly how everything is going to run. Be kind to your mother, Abigail. Teach the boy right from wrong. Teach the boy right from wrong. Oh god. I don't think uh, I don't think zombies are uh, are that quite that easy to be reasoned with, to be honest. Right. Time to get time to get dressed and time to time to get out into the open world and see how our game is performing. And there we go. There's the John Marsden we all know and love. Wrecked. So yeah, we see lows of 10 FPS once again. 13, 14, 15 FPS, which not terrible once again. And we should be in gameplay now. So yeah, we're in gameplay now and we're getting 15, 16 FPS, um, which isn't terrible to be honest. If we look out towards the desert, look up to the sky, 30 FPS, look down to the ground, 30 FPS, move it all around, 30 FPS. So yeah, look back to the house and we're getting 11, 12, move around 13, 15, yeah. So I'd imagine the fact that there are NPCs in the house, uh, being our wife and son, Jack and Abigail, uh, that is why we're getting lower FPS when we look back to the house. I would imagine as soon as our horse comes over, we'll get slightly, not as affected, I guess, but um, it's not terrible. So yeah, let's just continue along and see exactly how far we can get into this without us crashing. So... As we come away from away, uh, come away from the Marsden Ranch, we're getting 20, 21, 22 FPS almost, which is fairly decent. I'm just going to try take the the directest route to the town because uh, I don't want to waste your time, and I don't want you guys to have to watch me uh, riding through the through the desert pointlessly for for 20 minutes in a video because I don't want to do that, and you don't want to watch me do that. So yeah. I'm probably going to shut up for a few minutes and speed up this footage, probably two or three times X, and get us into the town to see what performance is like in that circumstance. Okay, so here we are in Blackwater, and as you can see, we are getting slightly lower performance than we were at the ranch, getting 22, 23, and 24 FPS when looking at the ground, and getting about 6, 7, or 8 FPS when looking directly into the center of the town. Now, it's not ideal performance, to be honest, but it is still much better than what I previously saw, even in the build from about 16 or 17 days ago, the last master build that I was using. Uh, you can see in this cutscene, we're getting 30 FPS. When I look at the ground, we're getting 28. When I look around, we're getting 14, nearly 15 FPS. When I look into the center of the town, we're getting 10, 11 FPS. So we're getting there. We're getting there performance-wise. Um, so yeah, let's just continue on into the town, try to find exactly the worst performing areas. I'm going to look at the ground just so we can actually speed this up a little bit. So yeah, so it's not 5 and... 5 and 10 FPS at a time. So yeah, let's just get to Main Street and trigger the next cutscene. Come on, John. Run, John. Should be a cutscene around here. Where's my cutscene? There we go. So yeah, this cutscene is also magnificently prone to crashing. So I'm also going to skip this one. I came back for another round of research. And now all... Okay, so we're back in gameplay, so let's uh, let's try kill us some zombies. 
No, I thought we were going to crash there. Okay, so we were just compiling shaders from uh, from the zombie brains. So yeah, so we we're getting 10 FPS. I just want to see what performance is actually like when we get a few more zombies on screen, because that is generally when we see a, a fairly substantial performance degradation in a uh, in games on emulators when you have large amounts of NPCs. Some more cash shaders. So maybe it's my shotgun and the interaction of the shotgun and the zombie brains that uh, are causing these uh, shaders to be cached. Okay, so here we have more zombies. Let's just try to run back this way. Bullets and shells are valuable commodity in the Undead Nightmare. There are no shopkeepers, so use ammo sparingly as it will come in handy later. Okay, so let's try to use our... Uh, let's try to use our rope and uh, lasso us some zombies and hogtie them. As this will save us quite a bit of ammo. And we'll compile some more shaders. Well, there we go. Okay, so we're getting 13 and 14 FPS. Which is not terrible at all. Oh, we'll drop down to 8 FPS. So yeah, we have a decent amount of zombies on screen now. You can probably hear that there's a few to my rear left. So yeah, let's just continue along and uh, try to kill as many as, many as we can even before, um, before either our game crashes or before I die. Because playing this at uh, 9 FPS isn't exactly the easiest thing, especially when you're caching shaders like this. So yeah, let's... Uh, Let's try take out our revolver and try uh, kill a few of these zombies. Oh god, even my triggers aren't, um... Even my triggers aren't, like, here, I'll try... Okay, that one fired. So sometimes, because the frame rate's so low, it's not, uh... It's not actually firing. Oh god, reload. Reload, 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 reload. Run away, run away. Uh, sometimes, yeah, when I press the trigger, it's not actually firing because the frame it's not detecting the input for some reason. Let's try, uh, let's try clear some of these zombies and get turned around and get some shots in. Okay, let's... No, let's not. Fire. Yeah, you can hear there's a slight delay because of the frame rate. So... Is that a crash? No, okay, so there we go. So we got a fairly decent portion into the game, I guess. But as you can see, we've lost video and we should be about to lose audio. And there we go, we lost audio. So that is generally not the emulator crashing, that's just the game instance itself crashing. And it just happens from time to time. And to be honest, I don't know why it happens. Um, the guys, the developers of RPC RPCS3, I have absolutely no doubt that eventually, in the next couple of months, they're going to fix this. And not only are they going to be fixing this, but in the background they'll also be optimizing the emulator. So that's going to be running much better. And uh, I have absolutely no doubt that in the in the coming months, this game is going to become fully playable on RPCS3, the PlayStation 3 emulator. So once again, guys, cheers for checking out this quick preview of Red Dead Redemption Undead Nightmare. As always, remember to give it a like if you liked it, uh, a dislike if you didn't like it. If you want to pledge and support the channel over on Patreon, you can find a link for that down in the description. And as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.